me a lot of peaches. I'm moving to the country. Welcome back to At the Mic with Michael Schumacher, brought to you by JR's Oasis. More than a fuel station, more than a convenience store, it's your one stop travel shop here on ESPN Radio, 1015 FM, 1570 AM, KVTK, Vermilion. Yankton. Well, we have a special guest live in studio. So yes, we're getting that a little bit more too. It's always a fun option. Just named the Melhoff play, uh, Comeback Player of the Year. It's Cap Bankston with the Crofton Blue Jays continuing our South Central League baseball coverage as we will be in Lesterville, or we'll be in Mitchell covering Lesterville tonight. I got a little grief for the Lesterville cap, but uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll make it through. I, I love my Crofton Blue Jays too, and I'll be back there on Sunday. But Cap, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? I am doing great. This is our first time meeting, first time talking, so yep. this has been uh, this has been nice. So uh, let's just kind of have you, for people that might not know you, just have you introduce yourself, kind of give that thumbnail sketch of Cap Bankston. Um, yeah, so I guess I uh, grew up in the Crofton area. I went to Cedar Catholic, actually, which a lot of Crofton people probably aren't a huge fan of. But, <laughs> um, yeah, played Legion Ball in Hardington, and then after that, I guess... Carl Schiefer was the manager at the time, and he called me and asked me to come pitch for him, and been throwing there ever since. So, yeah. All right. And so you uh, work at Explorers Credit Union? Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And how long have you been playing baseball, like all told? Oh, man. Um, Ever since whatever, you know, peewees, or I guess whatever you call it, T-ball, you know, five, six years old, I suppose. So, yeah, dad coached me all through up to Legion, and then, Yeah. Played Legion Ball in Hardington, now playing for the Jays. So, All right. And uh, so what position? You're primarily a pitcher. Do you play the, the field as well? Yeah, so with the Blue Jays, I've always just been a pitcher, I guess. Um, in Legion Ball, I played mostly second base and threw some. But, yeah, I guess those first couple years with the Jays, I just pitched. And I guess that's really all I've ever done. So, All right. Well, we're going to talk a little baseball. But first, let's just talk about this comeback award. Just kind of yeah. tell us. You know, just take us through the journey because I think, uh, you know, it's not like major leagues where people know every step. Oh, this <laughs> yeah. guy's injured. Uh, he's out. He's on the DL, whatever. Yeah. You know, with amateur baseball, sometimes you're just like, man, I haven't heard this person's name for a while. Or, huh, you know, I haven't seen him pitching. Just kind of take us through exactly what happened and, and the road that has brought you back. Yeah. So <clears throat> last year, I guess I noticed kind of early in the season, I was like, I mean, I don't know. I guess a lot of guys in the league can probably say they got arm problems, but I noticed it was substantially worse. We were up in Tabor, I think, and I was warming up, and I just knew it wasn't right. I think I threw a, a batter or two and was like, that's that's it. And uh, I don't know, kind of tried to manage the pain most of the season, but it was, I don't know. I could just tell it was kind of hanging by a thread. So I went in and got an MRI after the season, and they said I had a pretty substantial tear, I guess, in my labrum. It was on, like, the backside of my shoulder. Um, and then they said my bicep was actually kind of tearing away too on the front side. So I went in, got a surgery in like, uh, late September, early October sometime in there. And yeah, I don't know. Found out a lot about myself, I guess, going through a surgery. I've never really gone through a major surgery. Um, I was in like a big, I don't know what you'd call it, like a, like a pillow sling or whatever, you know, the ones with the big, Oh yeah, where it's like. Keeps it separated from your body, I guess. Yep. And I was in that for six weeks, and I don't know. It was, it was challenging, I guess, especially being your dominant hand. You know, throw the sports aside, just getting through day-to-day activities, brushing your teeth with your left hand. I was just – it was frustrating. But I don't know. It kind of – it teaches you a lot about yourself, I guess. You know, there's people – I guess you wake up every morning and the first thing you want to do is complain about the situation you're in. You know, you're just like, I just want to be out of this sling. I just want to be recovered, be able to use both my arms again. And I don't know. You just kind of sit back and think there's people going through a lot worse stuff. So I don't know. It was, I actually looking back on it, it was probably good for me just to be like, you know, it's temporary work through it. There's people going through worse things. So. All right. Well, you know, and, and like you said, it, it's your dominant hand. That's obviously, yeah. You know, so even even sports aside, um, were those were there those concerns that this is going to be something that I'm going to have to deal with forever type of thing? Um, you know, not, I guess not really. I mean, going into the surgery, I kind of was wondering that. I'm like, you know, yeah, I'd love to be able to pitch again, but will I be able to use my 
arm like I always have, I guess. And uh, the guy that did my surgery is like, yeah, the recovery rate's like 97% or something just to be able to, you know, be back to full range of motion, whatever else. So that wasn't a huge concern. It was more, okay, now that I know what the recovery rate is, can I pitch again? And, you know, my surgeon and my PT were both kind of like, you know, it's probably going to be closer to 12 months, you know, it's nine to 12 months, but you're probably looking at a year. And I just know, like, I don't know, I'm competitive guy. And I just kind of <laughs> got under my skin. I was like, well, I'll show these guys, you know, I'll be throwing by hopefully midsummer. And that was about when I got going again, I would say I missed like somewhere between like five to eight games early on and then started throwing like three or four innings here and there kind of early June or mid June. And I'd say I'm pretty much full go now. I mean, I wouldn't go out there and probably throw 130 or anything, but I feel pretty good now. So, well, and you know, I, and I just wanted to, I wasn't on my phone. I was pulling these up. So you've made five starts on the season. Yeah, I think during, so. Uh, You've pitched 24 in the third inning, so I mean, if they're starting you off slow, I knew they kind of eased you in a little yeah. bit. Yep. Uh, so that means you're going really good distance. Yeah. Um, and he, just a number that uh, so 20, like I said, 24 in the third innings, those five starts. Just a couple of numbers I wanted to tell people: two earned runs. <laughs> you know, before yeah. I actually te- say the ERA, that's a good number of earned runs. Yeah. Over tw- uh, 24 yeah, it's been going third. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Seven walks, 20 strikeouts. So, I mean, still doing about a strikeout, a little less than a strikeout per inning. So do you feel, I mean, after, after your first couple of appearances, is it even something that really goes through your head anymore? Not really. I mean, not in terms of, like, being worried about injuring it, I guess. It's more of just I'm a lot more, I guess, I don't know what the words would be. I guess in tune with just how my body's feeling or making sure I stretch in between innings, keep everything loose, just more cognizant of that because in the past, I just kind of, once I warm up, I go out there and throw and in between innings, kind of sit there, relax. And I'd say now I'm just more aware of how my body's feeling and try to stay loose as loose as I can. But yeah, it feels good. It feels as good as I have in quite a while, just in terms of I go out there and don't have any pain playing catch, don't have any pain throwing off speed stuff. So it's, it's a nice change. Looking back now, you know, you kind of mentioned not having pain. Do you, do you notice things that may have been indicators before, before the real pain started that you're like, well, maybe this was something um, that I ignored and you're kind of like in more in tune with that? Yeah, I would say, you know, going back to like even Legion Ball, I threw a ton of innings in Legion and there was just times where I probably should have shut it down or even the first couple of years with the Jays would go out there and, you know, you're the young guy and you're like, you don't want to tell anybody, hey, my arm doesn't feel great today or whatever else. And I would just say now, like, I just know that, hey, if I'm tight, I need to let somebody know to get hot because I don't know how long we'll go tonight. Or if I'm tight, I make sure I stretch and really try to focus on preparing myself for the game instead of just, you know, kind of rolling out there and seeing how it goes. Uh, So I don't know. I guess that's maybe just maturity and not wanting to be the, you know, macho guy of, hey, I can go no matter what. You know, if my arm doesn't feel right, I'm I'm just going to shut it down after two or three innings. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, And – let me ask you this. So now, now that you had that thought in your head of, man, am I going to be able to pitch again? How much more fun is it just to go out every game and have these opportunities? And is it something that you kind of appreciated even more, just almost like these bonus chances at p- pitching? Yeah, I would say so. Because last year, like, you know, when I started having pretty substantial pain, I was like, you know, yeah, I probably need to get surgery. But even if I do, even if I recover, like, I don't know if I'll play – anymore at all because I just don't want to go back through that so I mean you have those thoughts and you're kind of like this is my last year of baseball and now that I'm back and it's been going pretty well you just yeah I appreciate every outing out there with the guys because one my arm's feeling better and two I'm doing what I love with the guys I love so well and and that kind of leads into amateur baseball just a general discussion you know because you have guys we talked about the mental game you know Doug Hall is out there yeah after years Lee Hymas just kind of timeless how long do you Hope to be keep playing uh, as long as I can. You know, I'd like to not put a timetable on it because you know, I guess you just never know. But you know, at some point, if I can't pitch, I'd like to be able to either try to play a position or work on something else. You know, just to stay around the game, I guess. Because there's guys in the league, like you said, that are ten, fifteen years older than me that are still playing, and 
I just think that'd be awesome. It's awesome to be around it. It's awesome to be in a competitive environment all summer long. And yeah, I love every bit of it. So well, and and you, as you said, you, you know, you're a competitive person. You're competitive on your your timetable for returning. Uh, you know, in in life, kind of once you're in the workforce, you don't always get that. I mean, you get it a little bit at right. work, and but that's almost an unhealthy competition. Mm-hmm. How? What's the kind of benefit and the joy and of having this competition, knowing that okay, I get to go out with my friends. You know, there's this camaraderie and this community, and we're going out and we're representing Crofton and we're representing this team to have that outlet for that competition. I mean, I love it just because I love the competition aspect of it. Um, I've just been that way my whole life, and I'm sure a lot of guys in the league can say the same thing. That's why they're all playing, you know. Um, I just feel like it's a good outlet for a lot of us, you know, go to work all day, and sometimes you just – it's nice to just go enjoy a night of, like you said, playing baseball with your buddies and – you're competing at a high level still. You know, when I got called by Carl Schieffer when I was 18, 19 years old, I didn't even really know anything about South Dakota amateur baseball. And I lived 15 miles from Crofton, you know, and I thought, well, I don't want to go play, you know, some type of slow pitch is what I thought it was at first. And then you show up to a game and it's, I mean, it's high level baseball and there's, you know, former college players, current college players, guys that were competitive in their Legion teams, I guess, out there. And I don't know, it's just it's a high level of baseball playing at state tournament is a high level of baseball. And I think that's why we all do it is because we all want to keep competing. Well, and I think that competition is definitely part of it. What, what about the community aspect? I mean, I, I think some people that are new or don't haven't come to amateur baseball don't get what a community event it is, Yeah, you know, like for Crofton, you know, coming in down that hill down into Crofton baseball park, it's a different experience. And each of these ball teams, and each of these ball fields create a, creates a different environment. Uh, what is that part of it, the camaraderie and just the, you know, you're getting together with the guys and, you know, you talk about a, a group chat, talking about the state tournament and stuff mm-hmm. like that. What, how is that for somebody too? I mean, that's probably the part that I would say, I guess, speaking for the other guys on my team, that's probably the part that we love the most. You know, most of these guys, there's a handful of them that maybe I stay in touch with, you know, during the off-season months, I guess. But most of them I don't see again until summer rolls around and it's like nothing's changed, you know. And that's kind of the cool part of it is you might not talk to somebody in person face-to-face for five, six months and April and May roll around and it seems like nothing's changed. And that's just awesome. It's awesome seeing guys from other teams that you're in and you're out. You're like, oh, they got this guy on the mound, you know. We know we're in for a tough one. Or you got these certain guys at the plate that I know I'm going to have to be careful with pitching around. And I don't know, just the little – Like you said, going to other people's fields, the little battles that I have with other hitters, it's just, I don't know, I love it. All right, well, you know, Crofton's had a pretty good season so far this year. Uh, You guys are in the state tournament. Yeah. Uh, You had a couple of pickup players in Marcus Vandria and Lee Hymas that, you know, really kind of it's a unique aspect, gives teams a chance maybe to smooth out some of the rough edges, maybe fill fill what might be a a weakness or something. Uh, how do you feel heading into this game on Sunday uh, against Four Corners? I feel good. Um, you know, I think I think we got Zach on the mound as far as I know. Zach Hagee, he's been awesome for us the last two years. And, uh, I mean, anytime he's out there, we feel like we got a good chance to win. And then, like you said, our two pickup players, I mean, it's hard for anybody to argue adding Lee Hymas to your lineup is going to hurt you, you know. I mean, he's a great <laughs> hitter, great outfielder, and Marcus Van Drill is – can play a variety of positions. He's a good stick. He should help us in some way or another. And I think the rest of our team, our infield, I feel like is probably, I mean, I may be biased, I guess, but one of the better, if not the best infield in the league. And that's something that we lean on a lot. So I feel good about it. I don't know a lot about four corners, but everybody down there, you know, is competitive. So definitely not going to overlook them or anything, but. Well, exactly. And, you know, <clears throat> you mentioned the infield and I, and I was just going to say as a pitcher, how does it feel to know you have Weeble House, Kaiser, tramp kind of you know second short and yeah. third and then seth weebelhaus playing center field who can pretty much run down just about anything now you toss in lee hymas out there and these others as a pitcher how does that make somebody feel I, it's awesome i mean like you said you know i'm not i've never been a huge strikeout guy um i guess i've had maybe more this year than i have in years past but i'm usually pitching to contact so i'm trying to get ground balls fly balls and to have those guys i mean like you said our middle infield is second to none in my opinion Jared makes all kinds of plays over at third and you got Seth just running wild in the outfield you know I mean he can run down just about any ball so it makes you feel good um makes you feel like 
as long as I can keep the ball in the park, basically, <laughs> someone's going to make a play, you know? Well, and, that, and that has to be comforting. Well, I tell you what, normally I ask some icebreakers. You, you up for some icebreaker questions? Well, I suppose, they're yeah. Pretty, they're pretty low contact. Yeah, so. yeah. First one's usually pretty easy. You have one final meal. What's it going to be? Oh, man. One final meal. Uh, I'd probably have to go with, if I can choose who makes it, probably my mom's roast. Can't go wrong there. That's probably what I'm Okay, That's like what a, I'm ending on. Like a pot roast with yeah. all the vegetables? Yep. So, okay. Yep. And she, does she make a gravy then to go with it? Oh, yeah. Yep. Homemade <laughs> gravy. The whole works. <laughs> See, I, and, and like I said, because I will usually follow up with, do you get it from somewhere or have somebody make yep. it? So, yeah, if it's mom's pot roast. Can't go wrong. No, exactly. Yeah. No, that's amazing. All right. Next one. Three musical artists you can see from throughout time, live in concert. Who would you choose? <sighs> Tough questions this morning. <laughs> Um, probably going Morgan Wallen, Zach Bryan, and then maybe out of left field, One Republic or Coldplay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Tossed a little, tossed a curveball. Yeah, a little curveball. All right. We got some baseball references going. Yeah, left for field, sure. Tossed a curveball. <laughs> we're keep, we're, we keep it on the same plane here. Yeah. All right. Now, now, here's one that does tend to get people just a little bit. You can travel back to any point in time okay. and return safely once to when would you travel and why? Just any point in my life? Any point throughout history. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. I don't know. I just for the sake of the sake of the show, I guess maybe back to my first uh, amateur game. I guess I, okay. I really can't. I guess at this point in my life, I can't really think of the emotions I was going through. So it'd be nice to go back and I don't know. Get just, a feel for that. Yeah, get a feel for it. All yeah. right, and that is a great answer. Yeah. All right. Now, finally, uh, this can have multiple answers. Some people have okay. celebrities, athletes, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah. Other uh, and the others that are more that are more personal, but. Who are some people in your life or throughout your life that you have held up and said, if I can be like him or her, I will be a success. And whether that's a financial success, a career success, or just a life success, like they treat people well and people treat them with re respect, who might be some of those people for you? Man, hard questions this morning. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I got to start with my parents. You know, that's what shaped me into the person that I am today, I guess. Um, so that would be my first answer. A um, couple other people. One would be Terry Cottle. Uh, he was our principal all throughout high school, elementary school, and he coached me in a lot of stuff. Um, you know, he just taught me a lot of good things about, I guess, just respect, res respecting people around you, um, respecting the work you put into anything that you do. Um, I guess at the time I probably didn't respect him for it, but you know, looking back, I know that he was, um, he was trying to point us all in the right direction. You know, he coached us and him and my dad coached us in pretty much everything growing up. And, um, that's where I learned a lot of my core values, I guess, was through sports, through those guys, just because, I mean, your sports, everything you learn from sports bleeds into other aspects of your life. And then I guess my last one, getting a little more personal, I would say Jared Weeblehouse um, on our team. You know, him and I, so we've been coaching softball in Wausau the last couple of years. And, you know, I've always known Jared, but I guess the last couple of years I've gotten a lot closer with him. And he's just a guy that uh, he does everything right. Um, he's just the way he lives his life, the way he is, you know, with his faith life. That's just someone that I admire and that I try to be like just because he does everything by the book. So I think the you said it was a tough question, but you handled it perfectly. Yeah. That is awesome. One note on uh, Terry Cottle. He, uh, his senior year of college, he was a student teacher in Crofton. So oh, that, yeah? my junior year of high school, he was one of our student teachers, I think, for history, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, or social cool. studies, one of the two. So, yeah. yeah small world. That's a, uh, all of a sudden, it's a name like, I know that name. Yeah. So awesome. All right. And then, uh, you know, kind of along those lines, as you've been recovering, um, have there been any athletes or recovery stories that you've kind of looked at and said, all right, that's kind of the timeline I'm following, or is this just been a kind of a path of your own? 
Um, I guess not really in terms of a timeline. You know, I didn't look anybody up and was like, well, how long did it take this person or what did they go through? But I don't know. I'm just kind of a sports junkie, I guess. So I, w- I watch a lot of Kobe Bryant stuff, and okay. I just know that, I don't know. I mean, he went through the Achilles tear, and he went through all kinds of stuff. And I just like his mindset of just attacking things. And, you know, when I knew I had to go through surgery, it was one of those things that early on you got the doubts. And then once you're in it, you're just like, all right, let's, let's take this thing head on. And, you know, if I pitch again, great. But if not, let's get it back to as healthy as I can just so I can – just live live a better life with full use of my right shoulder, you know? Yep. So, yeah. All right. Well, excellent. Well, you guys are playing Four Corners on Sunday at 11. So that's the next time you'll be in action. I'll be in action tonight. But uh, as Lesterville takes on uh, Canova in a tough one, South Central League look, looking to get their first win of the, the state tournament. With all the South Central League teams, I mean, obviously there's that competition, but are you out there cheering on the other oh, teams just to see them? It's absolutely. Not, there's rivalry, but it's a friendly competition, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, I don't want to speak for the other teams in the league, but I feel like they feel the same way. You know, we're we're sitting at home texting each other, hoping that these other teams win, and I'm obviously if we get matched up, then that changes things. But, exactly. you know, we want to see our league do well. We want to get as many teams down there as we can, and – yeah, we want the South Central League to represent at the highest level. So, I mean, it's too bad that those two teams lost yesterday, but it looked like they played pretty well for the most part, and we hope that Lesty gets a win today, and hopefully we win Sunday. So, Well, I think that'd be great. Well, Cap, again, we didn't touch on it. I, I mean, that, it was the onus for uh, bringing this up, but, uh, again, congratulations. I guess what went through your mind when you found out that you, you won that Melhoff Comeback Player of the Year award? Yeah, it was kind of shock, I guess. You know, I mean, I've heard of other guys getting I think Lee Hymas actually got it. He did. I, I don't know, a couple years ago maybe. But it's and something he, he had that... a scaffolding accident. Yeah, he did. They, they really thought there, there yeah, was Yeah, ba- I think baseball was the last thing on his mind when that yeah. happened. So. Um, so I had heard of it, I guess. But, you know, it never really, all through the recovery process or even the season, I guess it never really struck me. I was just trying to get back and, you know, help the guys out you know, with giving them any innings I could. But when I got the call and when Colton reached out and told me I was going to get the award, it just kind of hits you that, I don't know, there's a lot of days where you're going to therapy and can't hardly use your arm that you're like, you know, yeah, I want to get back, but, like, what's the point? You know, you're not getting a lot of, I don't want to say support, but you're not getting a lot of recognition for the hard work that you're putting in just to being able to use your arm again. And then you get an award like this and you get nominated by someone like Colton, who I'm really close with. It's like, it just means a lot and it means a lot to be back playing with the guys. And yeah, just meant a lot to get that award. So. All right. Well, congratulations. And uh, the season's been great, by the way, I I didn't mention it, but ERA is about 0.74, a whip of about (laughs) 1.1. So You know, pretty solid numbers. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping to keep it going. So That would be awesome. Well, yeah. Crofton's back in action at 11 on Sunday. I'll have that on Classic Hits. And again tonight, Lesterville at 530 against uh, Canova. And I'll have that uh, on Classic Hits. Cap, thank you so much for coming in. Really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, Will, absolutely. Thank Thanks for, for having the me. Time. Oh, my pleasure. This was awesome. Well, that is going to do it for me today. We'll be back on Monday with more of At The Mic. We have interviews with my daughter on her bodybuilding journey we will have keaton gale and john gale of elk point jefferson the state champion american legion baseball team uh in south dakota we will have uh, ryan mcknight talking about the life of a a friend from the sdsu uh, football team that uh, lost his life Uh, they're trying to do some fundraising for his family that'll all be on monday here on at the mic with michael schumacher on espn radio 101.5 fm 1570 am kvtk vermilion and yankton We are sponsored by JR's Oasis.